Hi, my name is Jeremy Smith. I'm a PA at Stedman Hawkins Clinic and I work with Dr. Genario. And today we're going to talk about gluteal tendon tears or essentially the rotator cuff tear of the hip. We're going to talk about what's involved with surgery and answer all your questions. So let's talk about gluteal tendon tears of the hip or rotator cuff tears of the hip. First, let's look at some hip anatomy. If we look at the picture on the left hand side, it's facing the back of your pelvis and you can see the muscles that we call the rotator cuff of the hip or the gluteal muscles. And that's the gluteus medius, the gluteus maximus, and the gluteus minimus. And if you look at the picture on the right hand side, you can see where sometimes these tendons can tear as they attach to the outside of the hip. And where that tendon tear typically is, as you can see a gluteus medius tendon tear. If you have a tear in that tendon, it can cause problems with daily activities such as stairs or walking long distances. And we're going to talk about different treatment for this type of injury. All right, let's talk about the different potential treatments for gluteal tendon tears. One of the mainstays is physical therapy, as strengthening the muscles surrounding the tendon can take stress off the tendon and help a lot with symptoms. Another option is taking some anti-inflammatory short term, as this can decrease some inflammation around the tendons. Another option for some patients would be activity modification. They may decrease their amount of impact activities and that can help a lot with tendon inflammation or partial tendon tears, which may help avoid surgery. Sometimes we consider a cortisone injection to decrease inflammation around the tendon to help out with those symptoms. And another option could be platelet-rich plasma injection, which has been shown in some studies to potentially be more beneficial than a cortisone injection. Ultimately, if all these things fail, we often look at endoscopic gluteal tendon repair surgery as the next step. All right, let's talk about in more detail the actual surgery itself. So any of the patients that are considering the surgery, the day of surgery, we will have you show up two hours ahead of time to get involved with the nursing team and the anesthesiologist. The nursing team is gonna get you all set up for surgery and put an IV in. And then you would meet with the anesthesiologist who would talk to you about doing a general anesthetic for the surgery and the risks and benefits of doing a general anesthetic. After you meet with the anesthesiologist, Dr. Gennario will come by and answer any last minute questions. And then he'll put his initials on your operative side. After that, you'll head back to the surgery room and the surgery itself takes about two to three hours and is done all through some endoscopic portal incisions, which are very small. And typically it's two or three of those incisions. The surgery itself is two to three hours with removing any inflamed bursal tissue and repairing the tendon back down to bone. Following the tendon repair, you'll go back to the post anesthesia care unit or PACU. And there they'll make sure you're comfortable. They'll make sure you can eat and drink something and you're not too nauseous. And if all of those things are going okay, this is typically an outpatient surgery, so you'd go home afterwards. If for some reason you're uncomfortable or can't eat or drink well right away, there is some option to stay 23 hour observation and go home the next day. But again, most people do this as an outpatient surgery. So next thing it's worth talking about anytime considering surgery, is the potential risks with surgery. Although these risks are very rare and certainly happen well less than 1% of the time, we have to at least discuss them. So one thing's potential infection, extremely rare. Bleeding complication, also extremely rare. Nerve damage, which would be typically a sensation change surrounding your incisions, also very rare. Blood clots, these are extremely rare and we've tried to protect from them by using aspirin, 325 milligrams per day for two weeks and an anesthesia complication. This would be really rare, and the anesthesiologist will further discuss potential complications with general anesthetic the day of surgery. All right, so what's the typical outcomes following a gluteal tendon repair? Well, if you have a small, medium, or large size gluteal tendon tear, once we repair it, the results are excellent in the long term for pain relief, return of full function, and it's very unlikely you'll ever tear the tendon again. In regards to massive tears, typically the surgery is very helpful for pain relief and it helps improve function. All right, the typical post-operative medications, unless you're allergic, is we typically use aspirin 
325 milligrams per day for two weeks, which helps prevent blood clots. Naproxen, which is like prescription strength Aleve, helps out with pain and swelling. Norco is a narcotic that helps with pain. Most patients only take that for a few days and up to 10 days. Valium is another narcotic, which you can take with the Norco. It helps out with spasm and pain. And again, mostly for just a few days and certainly not more than 10 days. Zofrin helps prevent nausea. And then Keflex or clindamycin is an antibiotic we use to prevent infection for one day after surgery. We also give you some IV antibiotics surrounding surgery to help prevent infection. Let's talk about what the post-operative plan looks like after surgery. So first, we wanna start physical therapy the day after surgery to get you some basic home exercises. And then typically you will see the physical therapist on a weekly basis for updated exercises until you're six months out from surgery. We also wanna see you the day after surgery to change your dressing if necessary and review your pictures from surgery. The initial protection phase following surgery is crutches and a hip brace for six weeks, typically non-weight-bearing for those six weeks, and then transition off the crutches. Also, we wanna use TED hose and these sequential compression devices that squeeze your calves for two weeks to help prevent blood clots. We're gonna also see a 10 to 14 days after surgery with myself or Dr. Gennario to get your stitches out and see how you're doing. And then at the six week mark, you'll see us back. And at that point, we should be discontinuing the crutches. Anywhere from eight to 12 weeks, you'll be doing well progressing with a walking program per your physical therapist. And then we wanna see you in the office again when you're 12 weeks out from surgery. And at this point, you're typically doing really well with daily activities, such as standing or walking long distances. At the 18 week mark, we're gonna clinically check you, see how your motion and strength looks. And typically at this point, we'll be starting some progressive strengthening to get ready for sport activities. At the 24 week mark, we'll see you back in the office for a final check. And at this point, typically the gluteal tendon is fully healed based off of some studies. All right, finally, a couple things to keep in mind when it comes to this surgery. We look at it as a six month recovery for return to all activities and return to sport activities. But ultimately, you're likely to improve some for a year as you continue to gain strength. Also in the long run, to try and prevent future issues with the gluteal tendons, keep up on a home physical therapy program working on gluteal strength. And finally, for surgery preparation, Remember, nothing to eat or drink after midnight the night before your surgery, except we recommend a 20 ounce Gatorade five hours before surgery, as some studies have shown hydration can be helpful for preventing blood clots. All right, if you guys have any other questions about the surgery, just let us know. We'd be glad to answer them myself, Dr. Gennaro, or anybody else on the team. Thanks.